Hi there, today I'm here to talk to you about river discharge and in particular the flood hydrograph or the storm hydrograph. It's exactly the same graph but we can call it either of the two names. So it's good to start off with by getting an understanding of exactly what river discharge is. What do we mean by river discharge? Well river discharge is essentially just the volume of water that flows in a river and we measure this in something called cumex which is the geographical word for cubic meters per second. We're basically measuring how many cubic meters of water is flowing past a given point per second. Obviously, if you've got a lot of cubic meters or a lot of cubic meters of water, that means that there's a lot of water within the river channel. Whereas if you've got a, a small number of cubic meters flowing past you per second, then there may well be not as much water within the river channel at a given time. But this all depends actually on the river, uh, the river channel in particular that you're, that you're actually assessing or looking at. But what we can do is I can show you two images just to give you a visual representation of what we mean by low and high discharge. So a river that's in kind of a low discharge would be something on the left hand side. So you can clearly see that this riverbed, is, this river channel has dried up. We can see the riverbed. There isn't as much water within the river channel. So we can clearly say that that's got a low discharge. There isn't going to be many cubic meters of water flowing past you per second in this channel. Whereas on the right hand side, we can clearly see that this river is actually in flood. We can see that there's a very high discharge, there's a lot of water flowing through this river. So therefore you would expect there to be a high number of cubic meters flowing past a given point every second. So in order to assess uh, flood risk actually, uh, and to assess essentially how quickly rainfall enters a river channel, we use something called a storm hydrograph. So I'm going to talk you through the very basics. I'm going to talk you through from start to finish of how you would interpret one of these graphs. So let's look at the axes to start off with. And we'll start off with the Y axis, that vertical axis. Now, there are two things that we can read from this. First, precipitation, which we're measuring in millimetres. And you can see that at the bottom of the axis precipitation from 0 to 50 millimetres. That corresponds to the bar chart, that light green and that very bright light green bar chart. And that shows us how much rainfall we've had and when we've actually had the rainfall itself. So you can measure that. So for example, that first bar looks to me something like around about 21, 21, 22, sorry, 21 to 22 millimetres of precipitation. And we can see that the peak rainfall, i.e. the maximum amount of rainfall that fell, was on that third bar and that was around about 45 millimetres of rainfall. So we can see how much rainfalls fell and when it's fell, which is very important for our, our flood risk. Second thing we can measure on the y-axis is the runoff slash river discharge, which we measure in Cumex. And you can see that going from 0 to 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, using the full extent of the y-axis. And that corresponds to the line graph that you can see. And the line graph you can see is in dark blue. So if we run through this, we can see that to start off with at 12 o'clock, along the bottom we're working in time, sorry, along the x-axis, we can see that we get a slight decrease and then we get an increase in river discharge up to the peak, a decrease in river discharge, and then a flattening out of the curve back to normal levels. So let's talk through and run through each of these stages. So we get a rainfall event in light green using the bars. And if we move to the line graph, we can see that that corresponds with an increase a couple of hours later in river discharge within the river system, the river channel itself. Now this increase we call the rising limb. So the rising limb is the word we use to describe the increase in river discharge you see on a storm hydrograph. And this continues to increase up until we get to something called peak discharge, i.e. the maximum amount of water in the river channel at a given time, the peak discharge, the maximum amount of discharge that we get. So we get peak discharge and then we start to get a decrease and as that decreases we call that the falling limb, the opposite to the rising limb, it's falling, the discharge is falling, okay? So we get a falling limb, decrease in river discharge and we get back to the point where we are at kind of normal conditions. So as we say, that dark blue line is the discharge line, this is just showing us how much water is actually in the river at any given time. An increase is called the rising limb, to peak discharge to the falling discharge, which we then call the falling limb. Now, if we look at the peak discharge and the peak rainfall, we can calculate the time difference between those. So looking at this graph, the peak rainfall looked to have occurred at maybe around about seven or eight o'clock, something like that. And peak discharge looks to have occurred at around about 
10 o'clock, something like that. So we can calculate the difference in time or the amount of time taken for the peak rainfall to occur and the peak discharge to occur. And that essentially tells us how long it takes for the rainfall to fall, i.e. as rainfall or precipitation, and for it to then move through the ground system and flow and arrive into the river channel. So that's the lag time. That's probably the most important measurement that we get from the storm hydrograph. So how long does it take for the rainfall to enter the river system? Now, what are the terms that we've got on here that I haven't described yet? We've got the antecedent or base flow, which is along the bottom, that purple color. Now, antecedent, again, is a posh scientific word for the conditions that occurred before. So the normal conditions or the base flow, the normal conditions you would expect to be in this river channel is this dark purple uh, area, this shaded area here. This is our antecedent of base flow. Which we get down to this point, that's pretty much back to kind of normal flow level. And we've also got something called the bank full discharge. And the bank full discharge is that straight line running across the hydrograph. And the bank full discharge represents the height at which a flood could occur. So if our dark blue line, our discharge line, goes above the bank full discharge, we might expect the river to potentially flood, which could obviously be um, a risk to anyone in the local area, any houses, any businesses, etc., that are situated within and on the floodplain or near to the flood, uh, sorry, near to the river channel itself. This obviously changes from river to river, dependent on many different factors. Now, what we also need to know is what controls the time that it takes for that peak rainfall to occur and that peak discharge to occur. What controls the lag time? And I'm gonna go into that in my next video. And you'll find that link down in the description of this video. Thanks for watching, see you soon.